The half-life of radium is 1,690 years. If 70 grams are present now, how much will be present in 720 years? This question is going to use the exponential decay model. A of t equals a naught e to the kt. If we look at the variables that are in this exponential decay model, we have a naught, which is our initial amount, we have k, which is our decay rate, and we have t for time. Looking at the second part of this question, we have 70 grams are present now, that's our a naught, and we have how much will be present in 720 years, that's our time. So the only variable we're missing is the decay rate. And this first part, this first sentence, is telling us the half-life of radium. If we have a half-life of 1,690 years, this piece of information is going to help us find that missing variable, the decay rate. So a half-life is the time it takes to decay to half of the initial amount. So this is telling us the relationship between A and A naught. So the half-life is telling us that we're going to end up with half of what we started with when we have a time of 1,690 years. So with that piece of information, we're going to be able to find that value for k. So we're going to substitute into the exponential decay model. So our model is a of t equals a naught e to the kt. In for a of t, we're going to let that be half of the initial amount, because we're talking about half-life. And in for time, we're going to substitute the 1,690. Then we're going to solve this exponential equation. First, by isolating the exponential, we're going to divide both sides by a naught. It gives me 1 half equals e to the 1,690k. And then we're going to solve this exponential equation by taking the log of both sides. We have natural log of 1 half, natural log of e to the 1690k. And now that I've introduced the logs, I can use the power rule for logarithms to take that variable out of the exponent. I have 1690k times natural log e Natural log E is 1, so that simplifies to 1690K times 1, which is 1690K. And then I'll divide both sides by 1690. So now I have that K is equal to natural log of 1 half over 1,690. So now I can go back to that question that was asked. If 90 grams are present now, how much will be present in 720 years? I'm able to substitute in for A naught, that's 70 grams, that's the initial amount. I can substitute in k, which is the decay rate I just found, natural log of 1 half over 1,690, and a time of 720 years. So a of 720, 
is the initial amount, 70, e to the natural log of 1 half over 1690 times 720. So we'll put this value in the calculator. So that's 70 times e. And I'll put this 720 in front. It's a little bit easier to type. Natural log of 0.5 over 1690. So we're going to have 52, let's see what the units are, 52 grams of radium that will remain 720 years later. Find the vertex, focus, and directrix of the following parabola. Graph the equation. So we've got this equation y squared equals 28x. And before we find all these features, I thought we'd take a minute uh, to look at these four different orientations of parabolas and their equations. So um, I want to start with um, this one over here. And notice that we have a squared on the x. So this is one we're used to. Um, and this orientation is going to be an up-facing parabola. So when we think about uh, the important features here, we have a parabola that's facing up. It has a vertex. Inside the parabola will be the focus. And then the directrix will be running along like this. And then the next one also has a squared on the x. However, we have a negative on the other side. And so that's a reflection of this graph. So this is a down facing parabola. So we're going to have the parabola facing down. The vertex would be here. The focus is inside. And the directrix is right here. Then this equation over here has the squared on the y instead. And so when the squared is on the y, that means the orientation is left or right. We have positive, so that's going to be right. The vertex would be here. Focus on the inside, directrix like this. And then we have the squared on the y, but this time a negative. So the orientation will be facing to the left. Vertex, focus on the inside, directrix over here. So looking at the example I have, I have the squared on the y and a positive coefficient on the x. And so that tells me that I have a right facing parabola. So now I know the orientation is right. So then I want to find the vertex. Now the vertex on all of these, maybe let me use a different color here. The vertex is the hk that you see in each one of these equations, h and k. We only get uh, an h and k different from 0, 0 um, when we have parentheses inside the squared and parentheses um, next to that coefficient. We don't have that, so our vertex is going to be 0, 0. And then in order to find the focus and the directrix, we need to know that value of A that we see in these equations. So to find that value of A, we're going to set 4A equal to the coefficient that we have on our parabola. So I'll divide both sides by 4 and get that A is equal to 7. So A is the distance between the vertex 
and the focus, and it's also the distance between the vertex and the directrix. So if I start to draw this parabola out, I know that I have a vertex at 0, 0, and if I count a distance to the right, I'm going to the right because my parabola is facing to the right, seven units away, that's going to get me to where the focus is. And that is the ordered pair zero or seven zero. And then if I go seven units to the left, that's going to get me to the location of the directrix. So the directrix is a vertical line in this case because it's oriented right. That vertical line is at negative 7, so that's x equals negative 7. And then I'm going to sketch out um, the parabola. Um, you may need to find a second point on the parabola to be able to graph it. So to do that, I'm going to find the lattice rectum point. The lattice rectum points will fall along that focus. So it's going to have an x value of 7. So if I substitute that into my equation, I have y squared equals 28 times 7. So y squared equals 196. And then I can take the square root of both sides and get square root of 196 being 14. Well, plus or minus 14. So once you know you have the ordered pairs 14, sorry, that's not right, 7 comma 14 and 7 comma negative 14 on your graph, I'm going to count these by 2s, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. You can sketch out your parabola from there. Find the equation of the parabola described below. Find the two points that define the lattice rectum and graph the equation. We're given a focus at 8, 0 and a directrix at the line x equals negative 8. So before we start, let's take a look at the equations and make sure we know what orientation goes with each one of these equations. So when you have a squared on the x, with a positive coefficient, your parabola is oriented up. When you have the squared on the x, but with a negative coefficient, that's a reflection, so your parabola will be oriented down. When your squared is on the y with a positive coefficient, you're going to be oriented right. And when your squared is on the y with a negative coefficient, you're going to be oriented left. So that's the first thing that I want to do when I look at this information, is to try to figure out the orientation of the parabola, because then I know which equation template to start building. So I like to draw a picture. So if I have a focus at 8, 0, and a directrix that is x equals negative 8, I need to see which one of these match. Now with the focus and the directrix, the focus is going to be on the inside of the parabola, and the directrix is away from the parabola. It's a line, sometimes it's horizontal, sometimes it's vertical. Um, so with 
This, because the focus is going to be on the inside, I can tell that this is going to be a right-facing parabola. So that tells me the template to use for this equation. It's y minus k squared equals 4a times x minus h. Now h and k are the vertex of the parabola, the coordinates of the vertex of the parabola. And I know that the vertex is going to be in the middle of the focus and the directrix. So I know that my vertex is going to be right here at the origin and it is eight units away from the focus and eight units away from the directrix. So it's right in the middle and so I know that my vertex is at zero, zero. So I'm able to fill in the h and the k for this equation. The only other piece of information I need is the a. a is the distance between the vertex and the focus. So we can see from our picture that that is 8. So I'm able to fill in the equation now. y minus 0 squared equals 4 times 8 times x minus 0. That's y squared equals 32x. So that's the equation of the problem. Then we want to find the points that define the lattice rectum. So the points on the lattice rectum, these are the points that line up with your focus. So in my equation, I'm going to let x be equal to 8. I'm letting x be equal to 8 because of the focus being the ordered pair 8, 0. If I substitute that in, I'd get y squared equals 32 times 8. 32 times 8 is 256, and then I can take the square root of both sides and get y equals plus or minus 16. So the points that define the lattice rectum are the points 8, 16, and 8, negative 16. So if I count by twos here, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, I have one point defining the lattice rectum. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. There's the second point that defines the lattice rectum. And I have my parabola. A parabola that has a focus of 8, 0 and a directrix of the line x equals negative 8. In this example, we want to choose the correct equation that would match this graph. Before we do that, let's take a look at the four orientations. When we have the squared on the y with a positive value, that's the right orientation. When the squared is on the y with a negative coefficient, that's left. When the squared is on the x with a positive coefficient, that is up. And when the squared is on the x with a negative coefficient, that orientation is down. So we can see from our picture that we have a left orientation. So we're looking for the squared to be on the y with a negative coefficient. So let's do a little eliminating. We've got this is got the squared on the y with a negative coefficient. This one's got the squared on the x. This one has got the squared on the y. However, it's a positive coefficient. This squared is on the x, squared on the x. This one has the squared on the y with a negative coefficient squared on the y, positive coefficient, squared on the x. So now we're down to 2. 
So then I'm going to take a look at the vertex. The vertex is negative 2, 4, and we've got our h and k here, h and k, and we need it to be negative 2, 4. So that's going to be this one right here. So even if we weren't given this multiple choice question, we would still be able to figure out the entire equation by using a second point on the graph. So I would probably choose this obvious point right here, negative 6, 0, because um, it's easy to spot on the graph. And then we know that we have this left orientation. That's y minus k squared equals negative 4a times x minus h. And I would substitute in for the vertex that y of 4. And actually, in for y, I would also put in the y coordinate from this point and the x coordinate for that point as well as the x from the vertex. So this is going to give me negative 4 squared equals negative 4a negative 4 plus, sorry, negative 6 plus 2. That's 16 equals negative 4a times negative 4. Negative 4 times negative 4 is a positive 16. And then I divide both sides by 16, and that tells me that a equals 1. So then I would be able to fill in the k from the vertex, the a that I just figured out, as well as the h from the vertex, and I would have the equation of that parabola. So the equation is y minus 4 squared equals negative 4 times x plus 2. In this example, we want to choose the equation that matches this graph of the ellipse. Before we try to answer this question, let's take a look at the two different orientations for ellipses that we focus on. We have um, one orientation is where your major axis is horizontal. And that means that your ellipse is going to be longer horizontally. And you can tell that this equation is the horizontal orientation by A being underneath the X. A is always going to be your larger number with ellipses. And so the fact that it's under the x means it's going to have that longer ellipse horizontally. So then the other orientation is when we're going to have our major axis vertical. So that would be our ellipse being longer vertically. And we can tell from the equation, because A is underneath the Y, so we're going to have that ellipse being longer vertically. Some other things to keep in mind is that A is the distance between the center and your vertices on the longer side, your major axis vertices. And B is your distance between the center and your minor axis vertices. So that's going to help us to build the equation if we're able to find A and B. So for this, for this example, I want to mark out these points that we see here. And it looks like to me that I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this is the point 5, 0. 
one, two, three, four, five, negative five, zero. And this point is one, two, three. That's zero, negative three, and three, zero. Now you can see that um, because we have, and I apologize, I should have written that as zero, three, and not three, zero. So you can see that our center is going to be at the vertex 0, 0. And then the distance between the center and these vertices, you can see, is 5 and 3. So, and you can see that this ellipse is longer horizontally. And so the template for the equation is this one here with the major axis being horizontal. So this is the template I'm using, x minus h squared over a squared plus y minus k squared over b squared equals 1. We already mentioned that the center of this ellipse is 0, 0, so I'm able to substitute in for h and k, 0. And then we found a to be 5 and b to be 3. We've got y squared over 5, sorry, I uh, got that mixed up a little bit. We've got an x minus h. That's x minus 0 squared over a. a is 5. Then we have y minus 0 squared over 3 squared, since b is 3. And when we simplify, we get x squared over 25 plus y squared over 9 equals 1. So that is this answer choice here. x squared over 25 plus y squared over 9 equals 1.